do you mean you don't like it here? Everybody likes it here. It's paradise. <laughs> it's L.A. with hula skirts. As I remember, you were never too fond of L.A. either. Oh, I hated it. San Francisco's my town. It's funny. The only time I ever liked San Francisco is when I was there with you. I think I'll be saying the same thing about a walk. Nice recovery. Very <laughs> nice. Daniel, I'm just so glad to see you again. I thought that after last time, I'd be dead as a doorknob in your book. Veronica, an argument... It was a heated argument. It's not the end of the world, and it's uh, doornail. Knob. The expression is dead as a doorknob. Doornail. I know I'm right. It's doorknob. All right, doorknob. Yeah. Are you a little nervous about tonight, maybe? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I always get nervous before a performance. I'm sorry. He could have killed us. Call 911. We're on Farrington Highway near Paniola Ranch. In my bag, get my bag, it's in the trunk. What I want to report an accident. Farrington Highway. I'm a doctor. Are you hurt? Are you okay? My daughter. Alice. Alice! Alice? Alice? Alice, can you hear me? Hmm? Check on the other driver. Oh, God, Alice! Did you see what happened? Yeah, I saw it. This car came out of nowhere, boom, hit me on the side. I mean, could have killed me. Cool. You're not going anywhere. Hey, give me those keys! Then go get them! The ambulance will be here soon. Keep the traffic moving. Come on, move it! Move it! Come on! Move it, come on! What do we have, Daniel? Alessandra, seven. Knocked unconscious, automobile accident. She wasn't wearing a seatbelt. I reached her 30, 40 seconds after impact. Any change in pupillary response? Fixed and dilated. No change since I initiated CPR. In the ambulance, we inserted the ET tube. Blood pressure. Nothing. No spontaneous pulse, no respiration. Put her in slot number three. Watch the line. I need some help over here. OK, we do need one more IV. Let's give her 0.25 IV. I need blood gas instead. Epi's in. We've got activity. What is it? Ventricular fibrillation. Give me the panels. Move back. Clear. Everybody. Clear. Okay. Let's get that heart started. Yeah. Come on, come on. Three times the charm. Heart rhythm's normal. All right. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call radiology. We'll get a head scan. Thanks, Jay. Better get a lab coat, Metzger. Dr. Kalani's in the hospital. Why should I wear one when he doesn't? Anyway, you're wrong. He's at the symphony. He's got a hot date. Nipped in the bud by a car wreck. He came in with the ambulance. Trust me. Wear a coat. I'll think it over. If he comes looking for me, I'll be with 
Mr. Wonderful. So, how's the patient tonight? The patient is impatient. You're not impatient enough. I haven't seen you doing your walking or your breathing exercises. I'm concerned about your lack of progress. So, what's the big hurry? I got a clean room, a nice view with the doctor's parking lot. They come and go in their German automobiles. Everyone except you. What's that hunk of junk you're driving? It's a Studebaker. Studebaker? Jeez, Louise, they haven't made those since I don't know when. March, 1966. That's a classic. A classic hunk of junk. One thing's for sure, Mr. Trout. You certainly have a way with words. Who's this, a dog or a rodent? That's my dog, Russ. Russ? What kind of name is that for a dog? I call him Russ if it's OK by you. Russ has character. He's smart. More than I can say for some people. Well, if you miss him, cooperate with your recovery and go home. Of course I miss him. He's 14. In dog years, that's older than me. Used to be so fast he could catch mongooses. Now he needs a heating pad at night. Poor guy's got arthritis. On top of which, he's receiving substandard care from my neighbor. Hey, I got an idea. If Russ was here in my room, he'd feel better. I'd feel better. Pretty soon, I'd go home and you'd feel better. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, no. It's a hospital policy. There's no pets. I could slip you a few bucks. You could bring him in your Studebaker. Forget it. Forget it. What do they call you, Metzger? A residential? Is that like a domestic? They call me a resident. Yeah? Well, I bet they never called you a doctor. You ain't smart enough. Hi. Hi. You're here. Yeah. How's the little girl? We don't know yet. How are you? You gonna be able to play tonight? I have to play tonight. I guess you're not going to be able to make it, huh? No. I'll meet you back at the house. Okay. Uh, use my car. Oh, got him. Ah. Are you okay? Yeah. You? Yeah. See you later, then. Doctor, uh, I don't even know your name. Kalani, Daniel Kalani. <laughs> well, Alice and me are so lucky you were there. She could have died lying out there on that road, but instead she's all right. Alice isn't completely out of danger, Mrs. Saunders. Her heart rhythm's normal, and that's a very good sign, but she's had a serious head injury. There's no way in the world to thank you. If Alice had died, I would Well, I don't know, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, come with me. Use the phone in my office. Call your husband. You shouldn't be alone. Uh, I haven't got a husband. Um, he walked out before Alice was born. I haven't seen him since. It's just right, Alice and me. Where, where is she going? She has to have a CAT scan. It's a test to determine the... That's him, isn't it? Mm. You can get your blood Alice has to have Big Betty. She'll want her to be there when she wakes up. Daniel. Ah, anything new? No, no, it looks grim. Her pupils are fixed, not reacting to light, and no response to pain. What about the cat scan? Diffuse bleeding. Damn. What about surgery? No, there's no way. I'm sorry. You mean that's it? We'll do the best we can. We'll keep her intracranial pressure down. She's in profound coma. Get an EEG. I've already got it scheduled. You look beat. Get out of here, get some rest. No, I'll stay with it. The mother's alone. Thanks. Uh, 
this was supposed to be a seven-day vacation. Why did I have to stretch it to nine? Why didn't we go home when we were supposed to? It's no good even thinking like that. I worry that she's having bad dreams. I, I don't want her to be scared. I promise you she's not. What's that machine for? Oh, it helps her breathe. So when she can breathe on her own, we can go home, right? Teresa, there's been extensive bleeding in her brain. Well, how do they take care of that? Do they have to cut her? No, I, I don't think they will. Well, that's good, right? That has to be good. What's good is that she's young and strong and she's in the best hospital, so every possible chance she'll have, she'll have right here. Uh, if you're gonna stay here, you should get something to eat. Come on. Oh, I just want a couple of minutes. Please. Kalani, just the man I want to see. Not now, Metzger. Can't wait. This is perfect timing. Perfect timing? What are you talking about? The little girl there in the next room who was in the automobile accident. Her heart. Save the riddles. What's on your mind? She's not going to make it. We don't know that. We don't? We do know that. She's not going to make it. But the Cachola boy, he's the seven-year-old with a congenital heart condition. I know the Cachola case. He can make it with a heart transplant. Now, check it out. Their blood type is the same. There's very little chance of rejection. And their chest cavities are roughly equal. Wait a minute. This is your idea of perfect timing. I'm aware of your capacity for appalling thinking, Metzger, but you've talked to yourself. Listen. You listen. I don't know what kind of monsters they're turning out in med school these days. But we don't normally refer to the potential death of a seven-year-old girl as perfect timing. I'm sorry, I guess that was probably insensitive. You guess you were probably insensitive. All right, it was insensitive. You haven't even scratched the surface. With all due respect, Dr. Kalani, I think we have to be realistic here. Now, I didn't learn that in med school. I learned that from you. stay in the ICU, so I've arranged a bed for you on the same floor. Thank you. Do you know what you did to my baby? Do you? Do you? Thank you. 